Hello everyone and welcome to our weekly video. Today I'm here again with Eleni. Hi Eleni, how are you? How is Hi everything? Emma, I'm great. Thanks very much. Yeah, it's uh, been an interesting week and I'm looking forward to talk today's topic. Yeah, oh, happy to hear that you have a good week. Yeah, today we are talking about leadership. So it's really something really, really important too. That we need to work on it, <laughs> all of us. But before that, have you do anything regarding the, the talk we had last week? Well, I think there was uh, a really fun uh, idea for everyone around never reading a speech again. We were talking about online presentation and yeah. communicating online more effectively. And you know, I was saying that for me it's been so hard to see people reading speeches because it robs us all of the opportunity to connect. So that was the homework, not to ever do that again. Of course, if you really have to, you really have to. But the, the bigger piece of work was to really look at how are you going to evaluate your efficacy online? How, how can you get the right feedback from people that are very yes. niche in your audience group? So I hope people did that. Um, for me, I'm always looking at the results from the seminars and the online presentations. But even still, I wait until I've really established a good result with someone, and then I ask for an intent testimonial. And these are often given with a lot of joy and a lot of satisfaction when people are on that high, you know, when they yeah. felt really moved by something that you've done. So it's a good time to ask them there and then. But for them to be willing to do it, it helps if they know you a little bit more. Yeah, so I find that you know something to just add on as a tip for that from last week. And then also we spoke just about how you know, to look at ways to, you know, build that reputation you have as an online presenter or communicator in your industry by finding out what your industry really needs. So I hope some of you have done that. And you're very welcome to send any questions to me on LinkedIn. And uh, we're looking forward to your talk on all of that as well. We're going to listen to communication from your side of things soon. Yeah, that's 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 things that I, I also do. I don't ask for a recommendation on LinkedIn to everyone, but I talk to the people and I ask them how do they feel, what do they like it, what they didn't like it. Because we always assume that people like everything, but I also ask them if there is something that they see is not important or not relevant yeah. in the talk. Because it's sometimes we focus in the good one, in the good things, but with another sometimes we just have to remove some parts of the talk. Yeah, absolutely. And Asking somebody what they don't like is kind of difficult, but it's very yes. necessary. Yeah, it's difficult, but also depending on the way that you ask and depending also what you say before. Everything is depending on the people, if they know you from before or if it's a new person, yeah. you need to ask in a different way. But it's important. Yeah. So, yes. So I think we need to start talking about leadership. That is a, yeah. or today's subject. So to start, I'm going to start strong. So I would like to know some insight from you about the leadership in the future. So how do you see it? You know, back when I was growing up, we had that very amazing song where all the musicians got involved and they sang, we are the world. Oh, yes, I remember that We are the ones. We all wanted to make a brighter day, blah, blah, blah. You know, everybody loved that song. But in reality, looking for great leaders or having great leaders around is really everybody's concern because the more we have people that we can look up to, the more we uh, respect people that are telling us what to do or making decisions for us, the more faith and hope we have in the future. But the reality is that every single one of us, as that song says, is part of that we. So we are all leaders of our own lives, at least, you know, if, if nothing else. We are definitely leaders of our own destinies, our own careers. And so we talk about self-leadership. And self-leadership means that you have to take a serious look at your life and what's working, what's not working, what's a priority, what's not a priority. And then you also have to think about the kind of person you want to become, you know, what do you really respect in other people, in these leaders that you look for? And how can you become more of that? How can you live up to that quality? And so for me, it's really important to assist people who are in decision-making positions or people who want to step up more into leadership to begin to do that. Because the future really requires people that have 
been through the dark night of the soul and come out the other side with a piece of wisdom. They've done the work and they have very unique insights. They also have, paradoxically, universal truth. What do I mean? So once you've been through a really difficult thing in life, you have a chance to heal, a chance mm -hmm. to, to know the wisdom of life. And some of us can cultivate that wisdom really well. We can gather it, we accumulate it, we learn from it, and we move on. And then we can teach people, support people, help people to learn that as well quicker and maybe even prevent such a deep box thing happening. Sometimes we can't help them prevent it. They have to go through it anyway, but they go with the preparation of knowing that someone else has been there, someone has these insights, let me see if I have them, and they can come out the other side with something different to what that person got, but also confirm some of the things that that person might have told them. That's what I mean by unique insights and universal truth. So we need people in the future. If you are someone listening and you're interested to really support your community or you run a business and you want to become someone that people would love to work with, you have to be thinking about this. How can you really be reaping your wisdom? And how can you do it in a way where you extract what is very unique, what did you learn that's very unique? And what are you learning? What did you discover? What did you cultivate in yourself, your own capacity that is a universal truth? So what do we all, as all human beings, have to learn about life? This is universal truth. What do I specifically bring to the table? This is unique insights. Going through my terminal illness, going through my divorce, going through my bankruptcy, going through my loss of income, whatever it is that I went through. That's the archetypal experience. Many people will go through that. What did you discover? Well, I discovered mm -hmm. that building up my stamina for difficult moments in life is very, very important. That's not something everybody says. Everybody yeah. says, Time heals all wounds. <laughs> so maybe that's what you learned as well. You learned that you needed time. So then you can come up and confirm it. You know, if you get divorced, bankrupt, whatever. Time will help you heal it, yes. But I also discovered and I have to learn ways to build up my stamina in life. Meaning I have to build up my tolerance. You know, I have to be able to be more thick-skinned. I have to be able to be stronger when things are tough. So I have to learn to learn and grow through challenging moments. Mm -hmm. What do I do? Oh, well, then I'm going to learn the growth mindset. So we need leaders that have worked through their dark night of the soul. And I sometimes talk about that as down is the new up. You have to go down to yes. go up. And a lot of people you need to experience everything. Now in the coaching industry, we're getting a lot of, uh, no offense to anybody out there that's a coach in personal growth or life coach, but I do think as a clinical psychologist, that there's a lot of watered-down, superficial messaging that's coming out of the coaching industry. And people are getting a lot of distorted ideas, you know, that you can just become good at something and then you're a leader. Or, you know, you just go through a difficult experience and then you can teach the masses. No, it's not like that. You have to really go down to come up first. That means you have to do some alchemy. And we need leaders that have done that alchemy. They are the ones that become the paradigm shifters, the ones that really can shift the paradigm. And that's what we now need. We don't need more self-help. We don't need people that make it look easy. It's not easy. <laughs> it can be simplified. But you have to do the work. And that kind of person is a great leader for the future. Yeah, that's true. But I see, but now I see that a lot of leaders or people in high positions at work that they can do these kind of things, they are really stressed. So mm -hmm. how can they prepare and recover for this stress? Very good question. And I do a lot of teaching and training on this uh, in different ways. I will just say a few things about the importance now of getting connected to what you're really feeling. So we talk about that as emotional intelligence. We've lived a long time, especially leaders, in positions where they felt like they had to perform, they had to know the answers, which we still think is important for leaders, and they had to uh, be better than everyone else. And when that goes on too much and your ego, your ego gets hooked into that, it can cause a lot of problems where it starts to make you suppress your deeper feelings. You know, so before 
people wouldn't be honest about their vulnerability, their weaknesses. And so then it would pop up in the newspaper or you would see the president all of a sudden has left with this woman behind closed doors mm-hmm. and you would think, you know, what kind of leader is that? And the, the reality is we are all these things. You know, we have shadows, every single one of us, whether we're leaders or not. And uh, we need to be able to integrate all of that. So preparing now for the time that's coming and dealing with the stress of the big change that we've all been in. If you are a leader watching, you will need to get in touch with how you're really feeling and know that it's okay to not have the answers. In fact, this is a very important place to be right now as a leader because for leading in the future, you will need to become the answer by asking the right questions. Mm-hmm. You yourself will become the answer because you already have the leadership skill. You already know what it's like to manage and support people. But what's important now is to prepare yourself to be like an empty vessel where your intuition, your uh, toughening up through this struggling time that you're going through, the wisdom that you will be gathering through this time, the insights that will come, the new fresh thinking, all of these things come when you empty out the mind. The Buddhists tell us that, the meditators tell us that, the science is telling us that we now can measure the brain. When it's in these emptied out mental states, it means I'm not thinking so much. Because when I'm thinking, I'm in beta brainwave. I've got too much electricity in the brain. And so I need to go to alpha. So I need to be calm. That's why I would say mindfulness is so important in corporate sector. Mm-hmm. And that's why we're looking to get more in touch with nature. That's why slowing down during the whole COVID pandemic has been so helpful for people. Even though it's been very tragic and difficult, it's also been very restorative for people. So slowing down is very important to recover from the stress. So getting really deep in touch with yourself, being real about what you really feel, knowing that you don't have the answers, emptying out, coming to this place of nothingness, stillness, slowing down, slowness. It's going to help you recover tremendously, and then it's going to help you to make this neutrality, this objectivity happen in you, which is what you absolutely need in order to begin to see the new vision for the future. Some of us, some of you readers out there will be able to do that easily because you are visionary in nature. Some of you are more particular systematic thinkers or analytical thinkers or rational thinkers so you lead in another way so maybe that's not going to be so easy for you no problem <laughs> your insight will come another way and the insight will be to be able to find a more systematic way of doing it or to be able to think about how to troubleshoot certain problems here and now and not think too far ahead so that you can be in the present moment many many things are going to be coming and we actually built an entire chamber for this uh, which is why this talk was exciting for me because we've tested this, you know. Yes. It's a very important yeah. time for leaders to get into the circle of peer-to-peer supervision, meaning peer-to-peer support. In other words, to be in like-minded circles of leaders who have the same stress as you, who can actually de-stress with you by breaking down problems, by really looking at what's happening, by being able to admit that they don't have the answers, because that's how the emptying out is happening. You know, no one has a manual right now for what's going on. And no one should pretend to. Yes. <laughs> In fact, they should just be suggestions. And they can be suggestions from the past, but the future is going to look nothing like a past. So to truly recover, we need those four steps. I say them again one last time. Is to be able to really slow down. Very, very important. And then to be able to get in touch with your emotions, very, very important. To be able to empty out, to really get into the stillness of the mind. And then to be able to have like-minded peer-to-peer supervision or peer-to-peer support. Very important that you're sitting amongst people that are on your wavelength, Mm -hmm. not people that are only above or people that are only below, people who are exactly on point or similar to and that you feel what's so important in times of crisis, which is affiliation. You feel affiliated, you feel community, you feel communion, you feel shared space. Very, very important for your stress levels. And then, of course, all the life work balance, everything else will work itself out when you have those ingredients. Yeah, that's true. And when you feel that you are not alone, that you can understand each other, that's really important. 
Yes, absolutely. And we all need that, you know, whether we're yes. in big groups of people or not. But I think leaders can feel particularly isolated and alone. Yes, they don't have many people that share their experience. Yes. Yeah, that's true. And you always talk also about optimization of the brain. So yeah. how can we relate this to leaders? I love this uh, topic. It's one of my favorites. Me too. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of That's why I us together. Yeah, we, we, we really uh, became friends because we shared this neuroscience kind of yes. uh, joy and all the, the, the deep value it brings. I think for me it's been very interesting to find out about the ways that you can optimize your performance, especially now when we go through challenging times, it's almost becoming a survival method to not get pulled down into this right or vortex of negativity and poverty thinking or poverty consciousness or um, lack and loss of you know, consciousness. Of course, people live on this planet and they always have and they always will. Uh, when they you know, in, in, in masses like now, we are left with a lot of lost processes. So, our brains are trying to come to terms with that. And if you're a leader, you might have had a lot of losses as well from the organizational structure of the mm-hmm. company. You're no longer seeing people in person anymore, no longer interacting with uh, colleagues um, that, as we said before, on your level in real time. Yes or dropping a comment past the secretary's desk or going and standing at the water cooler and you know catching a little bit of social talk about the weekend with your teammates or your staff members or whoever, right? So mm-hmm. everybody's yes. suffering from that loss. But for leaders in particular, it's very important to know that that loss has to be processed, which is why I gave you the tips I did in the previous question was to get in touch with your emotions, NTR, get to your supervision, and um, to really um, be in the slowing down phase. Because when you do that, you go into an alpha brainwave state, which you can get when you meditate, when you're mindful, when you're in nature, when you're waking up in the morning and going slower than normal, when you go to bed and also going slower than normal. You get into these alpha states, but sometimes you have to optimize it, and especially when you're really stressed, you won't get into mm-hmm. alpha quickly because the brain is going so quickly. So you have to think about what are going to be your ways that you will supplement. You know? How do you give yourself an extra dose? So we have all kinds of ways of doing that. Um, there are actual programs that actually help you optimize your performance levels by giving you 30 minutes of alpha every day. And the apps and the meditation uh, um, applications help a little bit, but you also need to find your own internal self-reliant way of doing that. You know, so what's it going to be? Is it a walk on the beach? Is it that you take up a musical instrument because those get you into alpha? Is it that you're going to um, go for a run before you come home from work? So you, you release all of that stress. These are just basic things that everybody knows. But the real optimization of the brain happens when you take the brain into prolonged states of alpha, which means you have to do very intentional meditation, or you have to get in touch with me and I teach you how to do something called entrainment, which is where you educate the brain to sync up with an external slowing down factor. Oh, that's great. Yeah, and then it optimizes your ability to be an alpha for longer periods of time. And why is this so important? Because it helps you integrate your nervous system. When you're under a lot of stress, when you have a lot more stress coming, your nervous system just cannot keep up. No one else can. That's what yes. stress is. So if you give this induction, this training, this intervention, you optimize because you start training your brain to have extended alpha. You train, you have that time allocated, 30 minutes a day, for four months at least, and this is going to have long-term effects. So for up to four months afterwards, even in six months, you will have the effects of doing this training. Sometimes you can even uh, see benefits up to a year. And wow. if you keep the little doses as you go along, which is what we do, we change it every two weeks for the four months, but then after every month, you might do some top-up days or you might do some top up days per week, you know, and then you can optimize results for up to a year, two years, and then you just do another um, oh, update, great. four months, and you keep going. This is one excellent way. 
Another other way is to actually get into states that we call flow states, which is learning to actually master something that you absolutely love. So if it's surfing, surfing is a brilliant one, by the way, you can get oh, yeah. into the flow state using surfing. <coughs> you learn to navigate a skill that has something to do with many different environmental factors or one environmental factor. So everything happens to have a few, the wind, the water, the um, momentum in the waves, so the actual current in the sea, the sun, and then your body on the board. And you get into a synchronized state, you become very good at that, and then you start to have these moments where your brain goes into the zone. It's called heart mm -hmm. and head coherence. You can get little doses of that by being very grateful and thinking about things that make you very, very happy, then feeling the feeling in your belly uh, will come from feeling in your heart. You're also very grateful, very thankful for what you have. So these are, are states of coherence. They take the brain into a more optimal state. I don't know if you've done any gratitude journals, you might have you ever? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it's a similar thing to this. Just imagine that you can take that now and accelerate it. And then you get into these zone states, which are like what monks experience after years of meditation. And also what can happen when you get into the slow state. So if you're in a tough time and you can't do all of what I'm saying now, and it feels too much for you, start with something small, like a walk on the beach or start some guitar lessons, whatever instruments you started, start learning a new skill. Look at what it is that you love doing in your skill set and see can I go a little bit further, deepen this? Can I become better at this? And it must be something that gives you a sense of bliss. Now, mm -hmm. learning more about all of this is something you can do if you follow me or if you want to know more, just reach out. There's a lot more to say about it. There are some really new scientific discoveries about how you can optimize your brain, as I said, through entrainment and through the flow state. And I am currently writing a book about that for leaders. So it will be asked there for you to read about it. But it's also important that you start now. You need little doses mm -hmm. of it, for sure. Yeah, because long, long periods with the stress is not good for anyone. So we need to start as soon as possible. When we feel that we have a stress, we need to do something fast. What okay. I do, I go, I go for a walk every time. Every, I do it every day. Wonderful. And I try to sleep. Not not sleep less than seven hours and a half, never. But those are very valuable things. Sleep, well, water, sleep, and water. Yeah, water also. <laughs> yeah, my water is always here with me. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> and then, how can we make leaders to create more important, more impact now? That is a, a difficult time because it's completely different than before. Everything is yeah. changing. Yeah, so we really need you if you are really out there listening. We really need you, your expertise, because you are somebody that I call uh, ready to kiss people over the edge. Meaning that if you are really a leader and you're born in this time, something about you um, is prepared already to offer something for the future. Now, you need to go through your own process to get to that stage of leadership for the future, as we said before, we've been talking about the things you can do. And uh, to have this impact, you need absolutely visibility. You need the visibility. But in order to also be ready for that visibility and have something really important to share and offer, which is relevant for the future of leadership, not just for, from what you know from the past, you do have to go down to come up. Yeah, so before. this is something something you need to be doing. So before you get to visibility, there's actually you know these two things. The first one I call it capacity, and the second one is visibility. So what's involved in capacity building is exactly that. I have to work on my personality. I have to understand that being charismatic, for example, is a great way for people to connect with you. And if you're down and out, or if you don't have that enthusiasm or that excitement for what it, what's possible, what's out there, what can be done, then you can't lead in these very turbulent times, right? And so that means you're just not ready. 
And maybe it's not your role to be a leader for the future. I don't know. But to find out, you need to be able to go down, to come up. And that's where you get involved with those emotions, like I said. And you build your personality to be able to learn and grow from these challenges. So this very important second step in the first one is the growth mindset, is learning how to have that mindset. Because this is a very challenging time. Mm -hmm. Anyone who knows how to learn and grow through this time can teach something to others in the future. So how can you do that? It's also building your capacity. And then you need to get out there. So get onto summits, get onto podcasts, once you've done that work, figure out what is your unique insights and what is your universal truth. Put those two together and then share that in your industry. Share it on other people's industries. Share it uh, with us. Come uh, onto platforms that are welcoming this kind of knowledge and wisdom sharing. And be a spokesperson for a cause that you think is very important so that you can begin to take action yourself and encourage others to take action because we have so many global challenges right now. We cannot afford to have our leaders hang back in their armchairs and criticize the world or other leaders or governments or systems. They have to be the ones that get up off their couch and go and make the change happen. Yeah, really good advice. And what is the special formula that you would like every leader to know? Uh, I, I kind of tapped into it already. I said uh, these uh, two parts is capacity building. And by capacity, we mean changing your character and knowing the essence of who you are. And that's what really gets refined when you go through challenges. So this is what I mean. The first step of the formula is capacity. How can you increase your capacity, your ability to tolerate more? It's so important for the world. How can you tolerate more? Second one is visibility. And in that is mixed up publicity and uh, PR and media. So for some of you, it's going to be really relevant to be more visible in certain ways. For others, it's going to be more relevant to be uh, specifically visible in certain ways. Mm -hmm. um, but visibility is important because people need to know that you're out there. People need to know that you care. People need to know that you do have what it takes. They need to be able to see you, watch you, follow you, be inspired by you because you represent something for them. You are a mirror for them. Mm -hmm. It's not just about you. I know a lot of people get concerned about the vanity of visibility, especially women. You know, something yeah, that we have to work through. And it's very important to know that there's a distinction. You know, when you understand that you are here because you can help others, and that's very central to what you're doing. Being visible, being appearingly vain to others is becomes secondary. It's not so important. It's part of what you need to do to get there. You know? mm -hmm. And people have done it through aeons. I mean the saints have become you know visible because other people put them in that position and other people draw strength from them. So this is more the point, you know, so you are famous for the right reason, F F R R hashtag <laughs> that you can follow on Instagram. The third thing is credibility. This is something I coach people deeply on. You need to be able to be very real about what are you actually really good at? What are you not um, able to deliver time and time again as a result? Don't ever say that you can if you can't. And that's what's going to earn your respect as a leader is the credibility that you have. So that comes from other people, that comes from you, but it also comes from uh, time out reflections every now and again where you match up you know, the ducks that you've got in a row and where they're actually heading. And you don't want to keep um, pretending or wearing a mask or um, manipulating unconsciously or consciously a situation so that you look better than you actually are. The last thing is integrity. So that's really why credibility and measuring it up is so important because it gives you this integrity. And there is nothing that will boost your career more than, more than integrity or your ability to really help people. Yeah, well, I think this is really important, not only for leaders. I think everyone. all these tips is, are really important for everyone because you have to be true to yourself yeah. And, yeah. and show who you are. And you cannot be good in everything, but it's okay. Everyone have their good things and the bad things, but be yourself. Absolutely. So, yeah, I completely agree. Absolutely. And that integrity piece is yes. becoming so important now in the world because we have gotten sick of being sold to. And we have seen 
in so many ways for us. And we also ourselves have had to confront these ourselves. Yeah. True. So we now have to work on being truthful, being honest, and being real, knowing what our limits are, and then being able to put our own rules, our own decisions, our own preferences, so that we can so that we feel good with ourselves yes. and that we have a good conscience. And the more people we have doing that, the more we will elevate the quality of leadership generally anyway. Yeah, I completely agree. But yeah. yes, what I say is for everyone. Everyone has to listen to this part because it's really important in everyone's life. Yeah. And, and you do coaching about leadership, right, Lenny? Yes. Uh, I've, yeah. I've started a different form of that coaching to match up with where we are now because we need new kinds of methods. Mm -hmm. So I do uh, executive coaching and I also do visibility coaching for people that want to make a difference and want to be part of global change projects. And also the thing I want to say about coaching is that I think you know coaching comes after you've done a certain amount of work on yourself as well on a deep emotional level. Mm -hmm. So I like to work with people that have done that. And if they haven't, I can take them through what I think is still needing to be done on the emotional level so that we can do the coaching at this higher level of integrity. Mm -hmm. Because as I said before, it's possible to do coaching and to kind of superficialize the whole yes. transformational work that needs to happen. And I don't want to do that and I don't do that. And I also know people come to me because they are not they're frustrated by not getting through where they're trying to get through to get to where they really want to go. And it's, you know, even happening in the spiritual community where there's a lot of spiritual entertainment with a lot of spiritual methods, but not enough work happening on this emotional level. And the reason this is so important is because that's where the alchemy happens. You've got to know how to get into the mud in order to transform it into gold. You know, you can't just make gold out of not deep enough mud, then you just get fool's gold, you get gold dust. Mm -hmm. So the coaching is really for people that have done some therapeutic work or they've done some self-development work and they want to go to a, a high level. And for leaders in specific, we have very specific leadership chamber work, which is a place for you to come and spend an hour once a month with us uh, as a demo if you like to see what it's like. Um, where you look at what's going on for you as a leader in the time that's happening now, and then we begin to experimentally work on new ways of leading, and then we have very specific deep dive sessions that go way deeper into really cultivating the capacity of leadership for the future. And on a one-to-one -one basis, I'm uh, attracted very much to helping people elevate their visibility if they have something very important to do, say, or share with the world. So that means training in public speaking and in paradigm shifting, but also putting you in front of audiences that really need your message and also networking you up to speaking associations, to PR, media opportunities that are really going to put you out there from all my media partners that are involved in business, uh, conscious leadership, all the way through to holistic health and wellness. So it really is you know, important for us to know that you exist for the world to know that you exist, mm -hmm. and then to coach you to be able to deliver this uh, really important um, support that people need right now to be able to know that there are people there that can kiss them over the edges because life has got a lot of edges right now. We need people that can lovingly, sweetly <laughs> call us, you know, to try something very difficult and to actually try again if it's still difficult. This is the kind of leadership we need because many people are resistant, uh, they are demoralized, they are feeling very, very down and out about the future. We have a lot of young people struggling. We need great leadership. So the coaching is for all of that. Yeah, and I realize also that there is a lot of people with great value and they are leaders. And you see them, they are leaders, but they don't know. Yes. So yes. they need some, someone like, like you to guide them and to say, yes, yes. 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 And, and that's, that's what I've ended up doing so much, and I love doing that, because I uh, talk about the unsung song, you know. There's a lot of women as well that have an unsung song. They spend time in marriages, committed to children, and they now realize there's a song they wanted to sing all their lives, but they never sing it. And now it's time to sing it. And there's all this knowledge and experience from being leaders of families, literally, you know, organizing whole family culture. So they have also maybe a work area that they become very good at and they want to now take that and do something of great meaning with it. They want to, they want to change something or support something in the world, in the community, to work differently or to 
work with more intelligence or more love or more emotional awareness, whatever it might be. And then you also get these influences from young people to really experienced people, to people that have done something amazing in their life that you know they need to develop along with other skills and expertise and really be put in front of audiences that can actually you know, get the message straight and clear that they can do it. Like what you just said before, you listen to that person and you think, right, let's do it. You know, I know yes. how to do it. That kind of preparation and coaching and uh, development is very exciting for me. And I've done it with over 160 women already that, you know, I've called to stage and said, I think you have something to share with the community that, that they would love to hear. And then some women are like, really? No, I can't do that. I'm a yeah, that's and then they sabotage it and then I <laughs> just work with them. And, you know, even young people now, it's my new project also to start integrating youth and looking for young ambassadors. And I'm working with about eight of them now to really oh, nice. prepare them for the future. So, you know, anyone out there that wants to um, share what they feel is the universal truth and the unique insights, I think it's an important time that we learn from each other. And we're all born for this time. If we realize that and we are called to support, then we might just very well be the leader of the future. Yeah, let's, yeah we need to push ourselves a little more. Let's, when I started doing videos in my channel, I hated the videos. I didn't like to be in front of the camera at all. Really? Yeah, but I say, okay, I need to do it. I need to do it because I know really great people that I can make interviews and they can bring a lot of value. So I start doing it, and now and I, I don't think about it anymore. I, it's like I'm doing it. Yeah, I don't think it's so well. I mean, there's been such a great uh, following and feedback from people with what's going on here. I think they're getting a very warm and supportive experience, learning about some very tough stuff, you know, in, in a calm way. Very important because everything is in such a frenzy and, and so overwhelming that uh, having that kind of nurturing support. Very, very helpful for people to know. Yeah, well, I, people, what the feedback, because I ask for feedback, the people tell me that what they like is, the, yeah, what you say, that is friendly and is relaxed and is not complicated. It's easy questions, yeah. fun moment, and just learning in a friendly way. So, but yeah, at yeah, the beginning when I started, yeah. I didn't like it at all <laughs> to make videos. But here, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. I'm glad you took that uh, chance and you pushed yourself a little bit. And that's exactly what people can hear. So yeah. maybe for the next week, the homework would be then that people have the chance to reflect really on the leadership they have accomplished so far. So whoever you are, yeah, that's look, at, look at the top three things you've really mastered in your journey as a leader. In your own life, in your own family, or in your own company, whichever level of leader you are. And uh, look at the top three that you've got. And then I want you to reflect back on 2020 and 2019 and 2018, if you can, the last three years, and think about one thing that kept repeating itself in the last three years that's really annoyed you about yourself. And Absolutely. set that as your goal for the rest of this year, is to begin to have a softer conversation with yourself about that part of yourself, and now start to look at ways that you can actually build that. That's your capacity. The minute you can build that part of yourself more than what you've had in the past, you have more capacity to lead better. So it's one quick way to improve your leadership ability is to work on one thing that keeps tripping you up. Okay. That's really interesting. Challenge really good. Yes. <laughs> I think it's good. I think it's good for everyone, even for you and for me. We all need to be working all the time. Thing. So. Yeah, so, it's yes. always the same one for me. I have to work on it for a lifetime. I'm yeah, I always, always, yeah, always have to work on getting very focused. You know, I get yeah. very scattered. I have a lot of thoughts, a lot of creative thinking, and I always have to pull myself back to what's important. Pull myself back to what's important, and I still haven't mastered that. So, if anyone out there listening is like me, you think, oh well, I've had it for more than three years. I've had it for my entire life, and it still doesn't get fixed. <laughs> doesn't matter that's your lifetime work is to learn to keep building that capacity and i can say i'm sure if you look hard enough you'll see if you have had it a long time you do improve if you keep putting it on your agenda and i have improved in that i am very focused in some things more than i've ever been so you know i've been very happy to uh, celebrate that and 
so should you. So look at that one thing, put it back on the agenda, and keep going. And let's speak next week about how to do Next week is about communication again. That's so we'll right. talk like the, the, the talk we had last week. Yes. And that will be in my, the marketing side, the more marketing side. So, we yes. understand all that business growth that happens through the marketing and educating the audience. In that communication, people have the personal... Yeah, the basic brand things are how to communicate. Mm-hmm. And now they're going to hear that much more marketing aspect on it. So that's very exciting. I'm looking forward to learning more from you on that. Yeah, okay. That will be great to share with you. Okay, thank you, Lenny, again. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good week. You too. And see you all next week. Bye, everyone. Bye.